Hey guys, in this episode, we're actually going to cover two topics. The first is lighting, so the different kinds of lights we have available in 3JS. And this can actually have a huge impact on your scene, the kind of mood that you're generating, and also how the materials and colors are ultimately rendered on the screen. We're also going to be talking about cameras and the different types of cameras we have access to, whether or not whether or not we use a normal perspective camera or an orthographic camera and the kind of impact that has on our scene. So let's dive in. So first I wanna show you our scene without any lights. So as you can see, all our materials are rendered black. We have our clear color set to gray on our renderer. So you can actually see the horizon and the background as gray. But what we have drawn here is we have a plane, that's our floor, and then we have a cube and a sphere. So you can see the tip of the cube and the sphere just because they overlap with the horizon. So now we need to add lights to our scene. The first light we're going to add is an ambient light. And this is a special type of light that doesn't really have a position in your scene, but just sort of floods your entire scene with a consistent lighting. It takes a parameter of a color and intensity. We're gonna set this at 0.5 and make the color white. Then we need to add it to our scene. You can see now we have all our materials responding, looking kind of flat because we have simply one ambient light that's filling the scene. The next kind of light we're going to add is a point light. And this is a light that radiates out from a single point. So it takes a color and an intensity as well as a distance that it will radiate out to. Then we simply add it to our scene. And this is the kind of light, unlike ambient light, where the position actually matters. So you can set the position of this point light within your scene, and that's the point at which the light will radiate out from. Another kind of light we have in 3JS is directional light. And you can think of this as sunlight. It's a really powerful light source that comes from a single direction. So this takes a color and an intensity, and we also have to specify a target. So we're going to actually point this towards something because it needs a direction to be aiming. So we'll choose an object within our scene and have that be the target. And that's the direction that our light is going to point. So if we preview that, you can see it's pointing towards our square. So we're seeing a bit of the back shadow on the sphere. Another kind of light that has a target is a spotlight. And this causes the light to radiate out from a point in a cone-like fashion. So you can think of it as a normal spotlight. And again, this takes the color, intensity, and distance, and then we simply add it to our scene. And you can see we get similar results to the directional light, although not as strong and consistent as light because it radiates out from a cone and then fit, tapers off at a distance. A different kind of light that we have available is hemisphere light. So this is sort of like ambient light in that it doesn't have an actual position and just applies to the whole scene. But unlike ambient light, it takes two color values. And so these colors represent colors that are coming from the top or bottom. So rep representing a ceiling or sunlight source from above and then the reflection of the surface from the bottom. This can sometimes provide more realistic results than simply a consistent ambient light, that single color. So if you look at our example, you can see that from above, we have this brown color coming down on top of everything that's affecting our plane and the top of our sphere. And then from below, we have this blue color that's coming up from the floor. So we've talked about some different types of lights, but now I wanna talk about a lighting effect that we can have applied to our scene, and that's shadows. So the first thing we need to do is set some properties on our renderer. So we set our renderer's shadow map to enabled. So we set this to true. Then we set the shadow map type, and we're going to set this to three PCF shadow map. And there are different types that you can um, play around with. You can check those out in the documentation. Then we need to add a light source. So we're going to add a spotlight, set the color to white and the intensity to four, and then the distance to about 3000. And then we set the position of that within our scene. So we're gonna put it above things a little bit just so it can cast a shadow down towards our plane. And we're going to set the target to the cube within our scene. 
Next, we're going to set some properties on the light itself. So we need to make sure that it's casting a shadow. So we set cast shadow to true. Then we need to create the shadow. So we're going to set its shadow to three light shadow, which takes in a camera. So then we create a perspective camera and pass that into it. Then we set the shadow bias to, in this case, we're going to set it to 0 0.0001 and the map size. So what this is doing is it's generating a texture of the shadow map that it's going to project. So we set the size width. In this case, because we want it at a higher resolution, we're going to do 2048 by two, and we'll do the same with the height. Then we add the light to our scene. Next, what we need to do is make sure that our meshes are prepared to cast and receive shadows. So we're going to take our cube and set cast shadow to true, and then we need to make sure that our plane receives this shadow. So we're going to set on our mesh three, which is our plane, receive shadow to true. Next, what we need to do is move our camera back a bit on the z-axis so that we can actually see the source of our shadow because right now it's actually positioned at the same z position as our light source. So if we test that, you can see that we can now see the shadow of our cube projected onto the plane. Now you'll notice that it's not happening for our sphere and that's because we didn't set its cast shadow to true. So we can go back in and do that and say mesh two cast shadow true and you'll see now we have a shadow behind our sphere as well. So shadows can be a bit tricky to work with but um, there's actually some ways to debug your shadows a bit more precisely. So 3JS has a shadow map viewer and you can find these files inside the github repository but you need two files in order to run this you'll need unpack depth rbga shader.js and shadow map viewer.js so we're going to include those files then what we need to do is create a shadow map viewer so we're going to create a new three shadow map viewer and we'll pass in our light and then we need to set the x y width and height of where our viewer is going to render inside of our scene. So this is actually going to draw a box within our viewport that's going to render what the shadow is seeing. Then we need to call update on our shadow map viewer for those properties to apply. Then in our render loop, we need to call shadow map viewer render renderer. And this is just making sure that it updates and continues to draw with our scene. So now if we test this, you can see we get the square with the values, the x, y, and the width and height that we defined. And it's actually showing the shadows that our light source is projecting. So this is a good way to preview what your light source is generating as far as shadows and the objects that it's seeing. So now I want to talk a little bit about cameras. And we've been using just one type of camera thus far, which is the perspective camera but there are actually multiple kinds of cameras. So let's talk about the perspective camera first. This is a normal type of camera, the way that we perceive things in the real world where objects get smaller as they get further away. And the first parameter is the camera's vertical field of view from the bottom to the top in degrees. And the next is the aspect ratio of the camera. So in this case, we're using the window's inner width over the windows in our height, which gives us the aspect ratio of our window. Then we pass in the near and far plane. And this is the points at which clipping occurs when objects are either too close to the camera or too far away. And then you can simply set the camera's position within space. So we're gonna do some things to our scene to make our camera actually animate around. Um, we're gonna create a delta and increment that in our render loop. And we're going to have the camera look at a specific point with our scene. So in this case, we're going to use the light's position. So it takes in a VEC3. So the three points of our light's position are being passed in to look at. And then we're going to update the position of the light itself by having it rotate around in a circle by updating the sine and cosine with that delta value at a distance of 2000. Then we're going to enable that spotlight with shadow maps enabled again. And you can see our camera rotating around 
the light source. The other type of camera that we're going to talk about is an orthographic camera. This, unlike a perspective camera, has no perspective. The results is an isometric view, and this means that all lines along the z-axis of the cube will be drawn parallel. The properties passed here are the left, right, top, and bottom, as well as the near and far clipping points. So here you're directly influencing and writing out the dimensions of your viewport. So if we preview this, you'll see that as we're rotating around that same point we were, there's no perspective. So things don't get smaller as they get further away, and we get this nice consistent isometric view. Another useful tool that 3JS has for debugging cameras is the camera helper. So what we can do is we can add a camera helper and we're going to pass in a new camera that we're going to create at the center of our scene. And then we add that camera helper to the scene and create the new camera. And you can see it actually shows you where that camera is in space. So you, this way you can sort of set up your scenes as a third, sort of third person camera and be able to position your cameras the way you want within a scene. So here we're using a perspective camera, but we can actually go back in and pass in orthographic camera. You can see we get a camera helper for that, which looks a little different because it doesn't get smaller as things get further away. It has a consistent viewport along the depth of the camera. 3JS also has helpers for lights, so we can go back in to our lights and add helpers so we can visibly see the position of our lights within the scene. So we can bring our point light back in and add a point light helper. So it has specific kinds of helpers for specific kinds of lights. Then we pass in our light and add our point light helper to the scene. And there you can actually see the position of the point light within our scene. Then we can go in and enable our directional light and add a directional light helper. And this one, because it points in a specific direction, we need to go into our render loop and call update on the helper. So here you can see our directional light represented by this line in the direction that it's pointing. Then we can go back in and enable our spotlight and do the same thing with spotlight helper. And again, we're still calling update on that light because lights with specific directions, we need to call update on the helper. So there you can see the actual cone represented by the light and where it's projecting. So hemisphere lights work the same way. There's a hemisphere light helper and it simply shows you the top and bottom colors since the position is somewhat irrelevant here. So that's it for my episode on lights and cameras. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Mm -hmm.